One, two, three. Go. By the way, this is a very web three way of saying things. Don't think you know it all because you don't. Nobody does. Damn, this is going to have a massive impact. You know, just talk about background checks, for instance. This is a whole industry that is going to be, I'm not going to say destroyed, but it's going to be massively revamped. The power shouldn't be with the CEO. The power should be with the community. What can you say that if you would start right now, like imagine founders that are starting Web3 project now, what would you advise? What would you do differently? Well, it's a pleasure to actually start with you, the, you know, like my episodes and uh, by interviewing and bringing the knowledge about Web3 because that was your startup when I started mentoring um, your startup and you. And that's when I really like was like going deep into Web3 and you've been yeah. like such an influence. And I think that you are also the influence for many people here in Portuguese ecosystem. Um, I see that how founders also refer us to you and they... They really come all, all to you. Good yes. things, right? Yeah, I mean, like, and I think it's very good to start the, the episodes, uh, the episodes with you. Thank you for for inviting me, by the way, and and for the kind words. I mean, it's always nice to uh, hear such things about yourself. Yeah. Well, you're second time entrepreneur, right? Actually, third time entrepreneur. Third time, yes, 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 third yes, time yes. People tend to forget my first one. Uh, which, I mean, it failed massively. That's why people forget. <laughs> but uh, it's my third one, yes. Exactly. Yeah, but uh, that's what they say, actually, that the unicorns are being born, you know, like when there is already been time yeah, in, yeah. as an entrepreneur. And it's your second time HR tech. So, yes, that's, yeah. that's true. So uh, tell us what is like one sentence speech talent protocol is. Yeah, so look, uh, Talent Protocol has been uh, going through many evolutions. The best pitch I can give you as of today, and by the way, this is a, a very Web3 way of saying things, you know, we, we are evolving, we're working on, but you know, the, the pitch as of today is, look, we're building this uh, um, membership club where uh, the members can build their on-chain Web3 resume, uh, set up their on-chain uh, reputation, and create um, a community of supporters around them, people that believe in them. So we are working on, on something we call the belief capital. Um, when we first started, when we started talking, we were only working on this component here, this people investing in other people. What does it mean, You're right? Yeah. And we, we started on that. We had over uh, 60, 650K, dollars invested into talent until today um, and, and, and based on this first initial growth we started to build around it that's why i say our pitch has been evolving because we have been learning with our community and we have been building with our community in public open source and trying to decentralize ourselves as soon as possible I know that you went uh, uh, to sabbatical, right, for a year, and that's was when you've been still Web two entrepreneur, right? Yeah. And yeah. then you came to Web three. Like, what happened? So, yeah, just uh, in a, in a nutshell. Uh, so, as as you said, like this is my second HR technology startup. My my first one uh, is Landing Jobs. I'm still part of the board as non executive uh, board member. Um, and I've been like balls deep, all in into landing jobs for like nine years. And it reached a point where I needed something new. I needed just to refresh. Um, I needed to, to um, clean my mind, go from focus mode to diffuse mode. And that's what I did. And I think the be one of the best ways to do this is a sabbatical. Not a sabbatical in the true sense of academical sabbatical, not that but a sabbatical in the true sense of learning. So I had the learning process. I had an accountability body as well um, to go with that person for a year. Uh, well, one year was only three months, so I still owe myself nine months. Oh, so you did only three months in the only end? Only three months, because that's okay. when the talent protocol idea started brewing. 
Uh, well, in the beginning, as you know, it had a different name. Maybe we can chat about it. So it was um, three months to go to Web3, right? Yeah, three months when I realized one of the topics I wanted to go deeper was blockchain from a technology perspective. So my background is computer science. So I, I've built distributed systems before. It's, it's not something, you know, wow. I mean, blockchain didn't appear like this from night to day. It's an ongoing evolutionary process of distributed systems. The big novelty is that they, it has an economic layer on top. And all this proof of work and now proof of stake, this, yeah. these are very interesting things that I wanted to go deeper on. So you can say it from the technology, but also from the economic standpoint, I went deeper. And when I went deeper into blockchain, and keep in mind that blockchain has been uh, packed with crypto uh, traders and this sort of mentality for years now, I always try to stay away from, from that. Yeah, I do have my, my own portfolio of investments and stuff like that, but I do not uh, see myself as part of that community, even though I respect them. Well, some of them. Um, and that's when I realized that there's so many other things that uh, blockchain represents. That's when Web3 comes in, which is the, the next evolutionary step of the internet. Yeah, Web3 yeah, web right now, it's on, on, on a, a freeze, let's put it like that. Yeah, but it's inevitable at this moment, like everyone... No, it's going to happen, yeah, it's going to exactly. happen. I mean, all the brands are coming in, uh, there's more and more, even though it's a, f a frozen market right now, aka there's less money, there's still a lot of people coming in, and there's one very important thing. Right now, as you said, we are in Lisbon, it's, we are in a privileged place, you know, full of uh, massive brands, a lot of money, um, European Union, so it's a privileged uh, place with a, a very strong currency. We, we need to, I think we should make the effort, uh, people like us, uh, that look at blockchain and crypto and Web3 as a, um, an opportunity. I think we should try to put ourselves in the shoes of people that live in regions like uh, uh, Venezuela, some parts of Africa, some parts of Asia, uh, even some parts of Europe, where Crypto is not a, an opportunity, it's a necessity. Because uh, in those regions, you cannot trust the um, institutions, the financial institutions, the political institutions. And uh, the blockchain, even though it's just like there as a technology, it has implications for the evolution of the internet by default, also for the evolution of human humankind, of mankind. And I think that was the trigger point for me. That's when I realized oh, okay, this is much more than trading. And I knew that, but you really have to, to, to understand it and go deep to really understand it. And that's when I realized, damn, this is going to change the way we, we work, the way we live. And, and especially in HR technology, this HR tech space, which is the, the, the space that I like to help people have more purpose in their lives and be more productive at work. That's when I realized, damn, this is going to have a massive impact. You know, just talk about background checks, for instance. This is a whole industry that is going to be, I'm not going to say destroyed, but is going to be massively revamped. That's it. That's when I, it blew my mind. I was like, okay, I need to, yeah, to go and, deeper. And when <laughs> I met you, I was like, oh my God, this is a really cool idea. Actually, you just had an idea. You didn't have even like pitch deck. There was no yeah. even name. Yeah. That's was, what was the name? Was like Polka oh, Talent. Polka, Polka, Polka Talent. Polka Talent. Yeah. Sorry. We knew some people that were on Polka Starter, Polka Markets. Polka Dot was, yeah. was huge back yeah. then. Yeah. And we were like, oh, Polka Talent. The name was, was free, polkatalent.com. We still own it, by the way. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, it was... You know, like in all startups, uh, you always start with a name, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter, right? It's probably going to fail, so it doesn't matter. And when it becomes more serious, then... Yeah, you chose the, you chose and the name. And then you go yeah. for more, more serious stuff. Yeah, actually, there is something that I brought, you ah. know, like... <laughs> <laughs> so I have this, uh, you know, like the talent because, well, I am a talent at your platform. You are so a there talent, is, yeah. There is two my goals, so uh, like being written on the platform, so, which I'm <laughs> following, by the way. So, um, yeah, I mean, like your idea was really, uh, really personal also for me because success is really based on access to resources. And I'm, I'm coming from a not European Union country, right, for post-Soviet environment. 
also like poor family, you know, like there is like very little resources in what you can do. So, and also being an immigrant, like in a new country, I started to build everything from scratch. And, you know, for me, when I saw this kind of idea that can really transform, you know, like the way of uh, people that underprivileged, you know, yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. they can access to resources. And what Tallinn Protocol is yeah. actually uh, giving, it's a support system of people that believe in you, support you in a yeah. professional yeah. way, your career, and also investing in you, which is also for you, that's an opportunity to invest in your education, be faster in and accelerating your like, career tremendously. I think this is like where is for me, a very, uh, um, very good point, like, you know, this impact that it's, that, that it's good, great. But I think you said it very well. Uh, thank you. Uh, I mean, we want to support the next generation of talented builders. That's it, in a simple point. That's the, the connector for this whole community. And um, we believe that talent is anywhere. Um, and it shouldn't depend on, on where you're born or who your parents are, or where, where you go to study, whatever. It, it shouldn't depend on that. Um, yeah, things have evolved in this world, but I think it can evolve further. And I think uh, the Web3 space not only has the right mindset, but the right people as well that create this mindset and the right technology to support this. And I think that's fundamentally what Talent Protocol can bring to the marketplace is a new way of operating with talent. And talent, if you really think about it, you can think about all the resources in the world. I think talent is the most underutilized one. I met you around, I think, April uh, 2021. And then in six months, you've been closing already your like press-it round. So you already had MVP beta version with already registered users. I mean, this is a really short time. I mean, like, of course, you had your experience as uh, already being an entrepreneur, but can you please elaborate a little bit more? How did you make this transition from Web2 mindset? Because the mindset is very different, very different right? Very different, To yeah. Web3 and then build it, like, in a such short term. Um, what was you been using? Maybe some tools, maybe some techniques, maybe, like... It's, it's a big question. Um... Uh, first of all, you know, the fact that I was doing a sabbatical allowed me to be in an um, uh, open-minded um, space, mental space. So uh, with a positive uh, mental attitude and, and just open to new ideas. And this is very important because uh, usually when you are working on a startup, you are on focus mode, as you should be. You have to be. Yeah. And, and when I was on, on landing jobs, uh, on executive mode, I was in focus mode for nine plus years. And that's where I learned a lot on HR technology. But I was learning a lot on that, but I wasn't learning a lot on other things, right? So that, I think this is a very important point to start because I did add a lot of legacy uh, in terms of uh, thought process framework when it comes to be a, a founder, you know, in terms of Web2. You know, I had the process, you know, what it means to fundraise uh, um, with VCs, what it means uh, to have a board, uh, a shareholders agreement, all these things, uh, equity. Uh, and then when you go into Web3, you, you bump into new tools like tokens, NFTs, uh, different ways of fundraising, um, different mindset also for fundraising. You, you can, you, there, there's like... Um, um, a risk here, which is you can go uh, too deep and think really Web3 is completely separate from Web2, when in reality it's more of an evolution. So there's things that you do in Web3 that uh, uh, it's an evolution of, of Web2. So it's a natural evolution. But if you could still look at Web2, you could do it as well. So I think the, the way you operate, the, the, the team, the way you build the community, the way you fundraise, all of these ways, they have been different, the, the way I did it. And the only way I could do it was because uh, not only I had this uh, um, open mindset, but I also surrounded myself with people that knew more than me, that they were help me, helping me every step of the way, almost like a personal board of advisors. Uh, uh, well, almost like a talent protocol where you have your token holders, people that have a skin in the game with you. And they want to go with you in this, in this journey. So I was supported by a lot of um, other founders 
some of them I met before, some new ones that they believed in, in, in talent protocol and that they wanted to help us uh, take the next steps. Yeah, obviously we made mistakes. You're always going to make mistakes. That's a given for any founder, for any startup. Uh, but um, in the end, they helped us, well, at least not make the same mistakes they did, you know, make new mistakes. And um, I think that helped us do many things, as you mentioned, in, in a short period of time. Um, one thing I didn't mention was the team and the product. So I was able to uh, attract, okay, this already comes with some leverage from my past, but I was able to attract uh, um, contributors and, and core team members that worked with me before or studied with me before and, and that yeah. was easy and to set up. And you had also advisors like from the day one, right? So yeah. I remember like the, and also mentors like me, for example, right? So that was very big team actually, like in terms of like the support. Which is also a web three way of doing things. So we were building already in public. I realized, okay, this like open source, which I yeah. already liked before, but now this like open source on steroids. And we're like, okay, not only is our code public, but everything we're doing is public. Our tasks, our discussions. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. It's something new. It's something I've never done. And I really feel emotionally attached to this way of yeah. building. And, and, and I felt like people that, were, um, that I was surrounding myself with, they also felt a sort of emotional attachment to this way of working. Um, Maybe sometimes they felt, you know, maybe, you know, that's too far or too much or too extreme. But at the same time, they felt like, well, uh, I've seen the Web2 way of working. This guy already did that. So he's not uh, a new crazy that came out of nowhere, even though that would be fine, you know. Um, so let's give this uh, a shot, you know. So there was some reputation build up from the past. But I think people, it was that, and people, the fact that they believe, and also the fact that there's some sort of belief in this new way of, of building, the Web3 way of building. And I think all of this compounded, compounded into this incredible growth in the first few, few months, which then translated not only the, the, the fundraise, the, the first fundraise that we did, but also a really cool MVP, the first uh, alpha uh, version, which was you know, already working. Um, it was very good, actually. I remember I was testing that. I, it was, I was one of the first that registered in your platform. I mean, that was very good technically done. And, uh, you know, like you mentioned that you, you're building in public. Can you like, say about that a little bit more? Because Web3 is really like being in public. And that means, yeah, exactly. Like you do your mistakes in public, right? Also, and yeah, you do yeah. your success also in public. How is it like did the influence on your like teamwork inside and like processes? Uh... Building in public, it, it doesn't mean you have a camera with you like Big Brother 24 seven and you really building in public. That, that would be really like extreme <laughs> building in public. It doesn't mean that. But it does mean that everything you do, you need to think about, okay, I'm doing this. How can other people cooperate? How, how, like how can I make this in a way that other people can feel the the urge or feel at ease to cooperate. So um, this translates into many things. This translates into um, the, the way the team works. So for instance, we have community calls uh, every, every month where we, it's, it's almost like our accountability call, you know, like uh, we, we have to deliver for the community. When I say we is the, the core, the team of core contributors that there are uh, some full-time, some part-time, working on, on, on talent protocol. So that's one way. We also have our team syncs and we record them um, and, and we share with the, with the community every week, like uh, uh, what happened kind of thing. Um, and uh, if you also go on our Notion, you can see everything in writing. I think the writing part is probably the most important one because all the other moments are synchronous moments, but the writing is asynchronous and we try to work because we are full remote as well, we try to work as asynchronously as possible. So if you go on our Notion, you can see everything from uh, the way we work, our governance is all in there, um, the, the, the tasks uh, that we do. Uh, we work in seasons, which is basically a six month time period where we do a lot of experiments uh, with our community. And also it means that you co-create with the community. 
So when we, what we are doing now was um, co-created with the community before the season started. So we are on the third season. Actually, I'm wearing the t-shirt from season number two, but we are on season number three. And uh, this, the plan for season number three was co-created with the community. And I think that's what means for me to be building in public. Now, if you ask me again in six months or one year time, maybe my answer will differ a little bit. I don't think it will differ a lot, but I think there's steps that we need to make to be even more community driven. And one of them is allowing, um, making this, this governance more decentralized. So right now it's too centralized and we, it's a conscious decision that is centralized on the core contributor. So, we do the work, most of the work. We do have a lot of people that contribute as well. And this work is co-created with the community. I think this needs to evolve into, all right, we have um, almost like a DAO where you make decisions based on on-chain voting. Um, and, and it becomes a much more transparent process and more, even more public. Uh, so there's steps we still need to make uh, towards decentralization, which goes hand in hand with building in public. Yeah, and you mentioned the community, right? So it's uh, in Web3, I think that's one of the like major points of focus, right? It is the major, the number one. S yeah, and what do you think like the most, um, the most important points of focus, like when you're building like Web2, Web3 project? Yeah, I think it, it all comes down to incentives, right? We're human beings, right? It's incentives, positive and negative incentives. So if you look at like a, a company like uh, LinkedIn, for instance, they, they, um, they have a lot of data. Well, it's not verified data, uh, so that's a huge problem that they have. But um, in the end, who's winning? when LinkedIn wins is the, the shareholders of LinkedIn. In this case, Microsoft, they bought LinkedIn. And it's almost like uh, this feeling of, as a community, being part of LinkedIn, you don't really own it. It's not yours. If they decide to shut it down tomorrow, you're done. And, that, and you, have not, you can write an article about it, but you're done. You have no say in that. Yeah, the, you're losing all your, like, all your references, all your like, reputation built on there. Exactly. So it's not yours. And I think that's one of the biggest differences in terms of incentives. When you're building as a community, the rewards, the incentives is for the community to help you grow your fundraising process. I mean, you've been already Web2 founder, right? So you knew investors, right? Is it like your, you used your network, already existing network, or have you really built everything like from scratch to fundraise for Web3? So our fundraising process was uh, interesting to say the least. So first of all, I had to understand what it meant to fundraise in Web3, um, because there were different mechanisms different legals as well. So I had to understand the legal component. I had to understand uh, the um, uh, structural component of um, Web3 startup, which is different from Web2, because Web2 is equity. And yeah, Web3, it's easy, yeah. it can be equity plus tokens. It can be an NFT fundraise. There's many different ways. Uh, it's more uh, creative in, in that sense. Uh, it can be good and bad in that sense. So I had to understand that. When I understood it, like, okay, now it's the next step. And when, when I first started fundraise was in um, August last year, uh, August 2022. And uh, when I went to do the fundraise, I already had like uh, three or four people committed, small tickets, angels, okay? Uh, and, and it was interesting because on, on August, I started sending out our one-pagers on the first or second day of August before I went on, on a because my, my wife was pregnant back then, like super pregnant, and we went on a, a short like five day vacation to Dalgarve, which wasn't vacations, it was just working by the pool, but, <laughs> but it was working nonetheless. I spent the whole time working, but, and essentially I had to pay bills that month already, not the founders uh, um, uh, salaries or payments, uh, because again, uh, if you're coming into this to make money as a founder, that that's yeah, not that the point. Yeah, that doesn't work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, but but no. So to pay the, the the team, we already had a developer. We had someone new uh, starting in in uh, Martin, like a DJ and marketeer. Um, 
And so we had to pay the bill. So these three, four angels that already committed, I think it was four, they would be enough to pay that month. <laughs> so I had the problem of September onwards. So money, I was going after the money because I had uh, built myself, ourselves a problem. And um, what happened was the, the way, and this, this is something I need to, to be appreciative with, with having Philippe, my co-founder, it is a, a true marketeer at heart. So we were able to build a narrative and, and you know, we, before that, we, we went to the EIT um, uh, accelerator and you were our um, advisor there. And that helped us in using Philippe's brain and creativity. We were able to create this narrative around talent protocol that I believe was really strong. I think the core is super strong because who doesn't want to invest in talent? That's, that's so natural, like that's, that's human, a human thing to do, right? And, um, but we were able to build uh, a narrative, even though like our product vision has changed completely from that, from that uh, moment in time until nowadays, and not even two years have passed. Um, but that narrative was so good that when I shoot the, the, the one page of the people, it just spread like wildfire. And so one month and a half later, we were closing the pre-seed and I decided, damn, um, let's do a seed right away. So we did three rounds in a row. Yeah, I remember. It was I a was bull market, though. It's yeah, different to I raise in a bull market. I uh, was contacting you like in August, and then two weeks later, and you're like sending me updates, and I was like, "What? What is going on?" Yeah, happened? yeah, like, it's a bull market. It's yeah, different. Like, it's it was... it's. Um, how, how do I say this in, in terms of advice to other founders? Um, you shouldn't. There's there's going to be a lot of distractions in the bull market, and it's impossible. Uh, it's, al it's almost impossible not to get distracted. You know, it's, gonna, it's just so many distractions from f even yourself, your team, your advisors. Your, it's just, it's almost like a circus, okay? So it's, it's easy to get distracted. So you should try as much as possible not to get distracted, but you know you're going to get a little bit distracted because it's just impossible. And in a bear market, it's the opposite. You, you wish for some sort of distraction to exist because it's so, it's almost like a sad moment where everyone is down, you know, emotionally. Uh, but at the same time, it's great because you're not distracted. So there's only one thing to do, build. It's great. So um, we have been, I, I tell my team, we were born in a bull market, but we we're being raised in a bear market. And that forced our team to make a, a, um, a mindset change and also, being in a bear market, new opportunities appear. Like we acquired the company uh, a few months ago. So we were not even one year and a half years old and we acquired an another company. Yeah, it was almost like an equi hire kind of thing. Uh, but they were building in the social token space, which is very proximate to what we're doing. So we felt like, okay, let's, let's use and, and um, make, uh, I think it was good for our community and theirs when we bought Agra, like to, to merge the two. So we, we were in a stronger position in the market. It was a bear market. It's a very good moment for merges to happen and acquisitions to happen. It's a very good time for buyers. It's not a very good time for sellers though. What can you say that if you would start right now, like imagine founders that are starting Web3 project now, what would you advise? What would you do differently? Yeah, one, one advice is um, Web3 is still in the super early days. You know, it's almost like Web2 was in 2004 when um, kind of like started 2003, 2004 was that moment when it started uh, to appear. We, we are in that stage, you know, it's still very early. And, and if you think about like Web2, which was the driver for internet adoption, real internet adoption, it only really started when mobile appeared in 2007, eight, that's when it really kicked off. So we're still in the stone age of, of Web3. So be m mindful and self-aware that's where we are. And that means one thing, is that what do you know one day, six months later, it's completely different. So this is probably the most, um, uh, uh, the best advice I can give is, 
don't, don't think you know it all because you don't. Nobody does. Also, if someone tells you they do, be afraid or, 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 or be more, um, uh, how do you say, uh, calm in, uh, in dealings with that person. Uh, because it's, it's very strange to know it all when you're just starting in the Stone Age, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's number one. In terms of like uh, building uh, uh, the startup, I think the most important thing is who you surround yourself with. So it should be people with this, this mindset that are fully aware of where we are as well and um, talented uh, builders as well. So uh, right now it's a bear market, so definitely builders. If it was a bull market, then I would say more uh, builders, but also marketeers. Uh, so it's, it's also time to invest in marketing uh, more in a bull market. So I, I would think that those are my, my two advices. So surround yourself always with super talented people. Uh, and the, the first advice is be mindful that things change really fast, especially when no one really understands what's the way to go. It's kind of like, we know where we're going, the vision is there, like we know the impact this will have on economy, on identity, and many different things uh, on, on the way we use the internet, but we don't know for sure how we're gonna get there. That step is still missing, and no one really nailed it yet. So. And it will change also the perspective for these big corporations, uh, the Web3, I mean, like it will be the total change. I think the, the, there will be new entities. I'm not going to say corporation. I'm going to say new organizations that will be lead, the new leaders. It's very hard for existing legacy organizations to lead a new wave of innovation. It's very hard. It's very hard. It become too big, too fat, too slow. Um, yeah, they're not flexible. To complacent. Uh, the best thing you can do as a big organization is invest in the new waves of talent. Um, but to really invest, not to kill innovation, because that's sometimes what I see like Google doing is they buy a startup yeah. and they completely shut it down. As it's like it's, it's waste of talent, right? And it's waste of capital as well. I think these corporations, and, and, and it also goes to VC, but I think VC, they have it figure out or, or more figure out is like, you're really investing so people change the game, right? You're not investing to kill the game, you're investing to change the game. So I'm not sure what the role of these corporations will be. I think some of them like Facebook was going super or Meta was going super in into the metaverse. I think it was too soon, but I think he understood that's the future. Um, it's just that the hardware is not there yet, right? Uh, so. It's exciting times, you know, let's say, let's put it like this. It's really exciting times, the same way uh, 2004 was when, when the internet, like as we know, like HTML5, CSS3, that it really, JavaScript, it really allowed the builders to build better because before that we were building flash sites. I, my, no, I wouldn't say my first, first startup, but before that I had other projects. I've built sites in flash, it's horrible. <laughs> It's horrible. Now, when we went into this new wave of internet, that just exploded creativity, e-commerce. It just exploded. And then mobile came in and just like a mega boom. And now we're waiting for the next one. AI, GPT-3 is the next mega boom, for sure. And Web3 is just slowly, it's just gonna, we're just waiting for that, that moment. Yeah. But slowly it's gonna happen. And, and you mentioned something that is like corporations are not innovative, they're like too fat, you know, like with big teams. And I know that you kept your team quite small. Yeah, and, on purpose. Uh, yeah, and I know that it's on purpose. And uh, also you want to not to become that like big team, but also to step down, right? Yeah. As a CEO, it's worth... Uh, in your like um, profile on talent, that was one of your goals. It's one of my goals, yeah. Yeah, is it like the journey for like a typical Web three startup should be like that, or is it like your vision of? Yeah, my belief as of now, and well, for the next uh, foreseeing uh, foreseeable time, is yes, that's my my vision of decentralization of power. We're talking about power here. Like the power shouldn't be with the CEO, the power should be with the community. I think the talent protocol community feels safe that I'm leading it, 
but what if I lose my mind and I Elon Musk myself and I buy and I completely unfocus myself? What if? So it shouldn't be dependent on, on uh, one person or one, one, one stakeholder, right? And so I totally be believe in that. Um, to try to answer your questions, like there's two other beliefs that I have. One is the decoupling of work. So I believe, especially for new generations, uh, Gen Z, that the, the work, we, we will stop having what we think like an employee and we will start having contributors. So the, the people that will do this, this in many different projects, almost like freelancing, but it's different because it's contributions where we have a stake. And freelancing, you get paid for the hours you do and that's it, and then you go away. Here is different, it's like, is, imagine you're working in different organizations and you are getting paid not only in fiat money, so to, to, for your day-to-day -day, uh, expenses, but also you get a stake. In, in what you're helping with, in what you're contributing. So this is a new way of working. So I am a total believer in that. And I've seen that working. I, I can give you an example. We've had people uh, going on our uh, GitHub um, and, and basically submitting a, a pull request uh, with code changes. We don't know who they are. They are pseudonymous. We just look at the code. It's cool. We accept and then we pay them. And we pay them partially with Talent Protocol token, partially with uh, USDC. So it's a new way of working. So I believe in this. And I also believe that small teams are much faster, much more agile, um, and, and much better at work, you know, and, and changing uh, uh, things. Um, so that's what we're doing. We do have a lot of people collaborating with us, a lot. Uh, but the team, the ones uh, uh, leading the, the process is small. And what I think should happen, and now I'm saying should because this would have to be a community proposal. When we are more decentralized in our governance, I will make a community proposal that we will stop having a core contributors team or, or basically the core contributors team becomes like a leadership team of two or three people. And this is voted by the community from X time to X time. Almost like, I don't want to say a democracy, but a, a, a governance that is more decentralized. Uh, for a given period of time, you have this leadership that was voted by the community to lead the community. Well, obviously, you're leading in public. Financials are public. Everything is public. Um, and, and then when their period comes, then you do another vote for the next leadership team. This is what I believe should happen with Town Protocol. Maybe I'll be the, the first leader of this, uh, of this process, the first season of this new way of working. Maybe, I don't know. Um, maybe that's the w easiest way to make a transition is that I'm just thinking out loud here. But that's the way I see things progressing. And that's why I say I want to step down. I want to stay involved with the project. I want the project to succeed, the community to thrive people to get invested, the, our careers together to evolve and to grow. Um, but I don't feel that that necessarily depends on having a CEO. Very interesting concept. I, I think this is also like, you know, like a changing of the mindset in general for how we see the projects. Um, you yeah, know, like especially from the new generations. From tree, yeah. yeah. And also, um, yeah, there is a, a really big trend that uh, the new generations, they want to work with companies which they actually believe in, right? So that's... Um, that's it. And, yeah. and that they should have a skin in the game. So like, okay, you believe in company A, company B, company C. Do they have projects that you can do? They do. Do you have time? Okay, split your time, do those projects yeah. and, and get their tokens, NFTs, whatever uh, they, they have, uh, depends on their, their uh, infrastructure. And, and you're part of, of that. And then you can contribute to their governance as well. You can be, you are an owner. And we move from revenue to ownership. Yeah. And this is the biggest change. Not, not necessarily, you know, you're going to get paid just with tokens. I mean, I don't think that that's, that's the extreme situation. I don't believe in that. But I believe in also not just getting paid in revenue. You know, you see this in startups in Web2 as well. Now everyone is talking about stock options, like the new 
legislation coming up for stock options. Why? Because uh, the startups, especially uh, scale-ups, they want uh, to retain their employees and the, one, the way to do it is to give them more ownership. So this is already happening in Web2 with very limita- very limit- a lot yeah. of limitations, a yeah. lot of legal problems, whatever, it depends from country to country as well. And in Web3, it's almost like, okay, none of that is a problem, and it's so easy, it's on-chain, it's so easy to do that, and it's so um, natural, organic, so it's, it's cool. And just wrapping up, so any thoughts from your side, like last conclusions, like two, three points? From the Web3 space. Um, what advice would you give, for example, to Web3 founders, or those who are not even Web3 founders yet, they're just touching? Maybe some books, maybe some course, maybe some yeah. um, there's, there's a lot of um, resources, really cool for people starting. I think the best advice is, uh, so two things. One, the, the learning part, there's a lot of courses. Uh, it's more a... Uh, Theoretic, theoretical exercise there, but there's a really a lot of cool courses like uh, Rabbit Hole, uh, Surge. They have a really nice course. We're gonna we're actually gonna compile a list of the ones that we like oh, nice. and, and gonna share with our community. Uh, maybe we'll even co-create a course with another um, uh, community, um, yeah, Web3 community. So let's see what happens there. But there's a lot of things in there. Uh, just go on Town Protocol, Discord, and ask. It will be shared with you. Um, second thing is on a more uh, practical approach. Um, just take some money, 50 euros, 20 euros, whatever, and start playing around with those money. What does this mean? You know, go and buy some tokens, uh, go on Town Protocol, invest in some talent, just see the mechanics and see what it really means, the blockchain. Yeah. You know, that all the things are um, on-chain. You know, what does this mean? Because we say these things, oh, it's on-chain, the resume is on-chain, whatever, and we assume that people know, but what does it really mean? So just really, uh, some money, doesn't have to be a lot of money, just spend it, money that you don't need, just as a, a, a learning <laughs> exercise, right? And um, the, the third thing is, you know, uh, set up your profile on Talent Protocol, surround yourselves with people that believe in you. Um, and, you know, if they are on Talent Protocol, they also believe in Web3. So uh, it's just a good step to, to do that approach and, and, and kick your off your, your Web3 story. Yeah, and support system, right? That's what we started from the conversation. It. And it's, I think it's a very good way to end the conversation, you know, because... It's, uh, it's incredible how we can, you know, support each other and accelerate each other. Yes. And, um, yeah, thank you so much. It was a very nice conversation. Uh, very Thanks awesome. Yeah. And uh, thank you. All right. Let's do this. Mm-hmm.